history, archaeology and adventure. This film's got it all. I'm following Ishmael Fuentes, a local indigenous guy who I've befriended in the Valley of the Gods, Colombia. He's taken me to see what he calls a waka, a sacred stone associated with ancestral spirits emblazoned with red ochre pictograms where indigenous cultures made offerings to the gods. The reason Ishmael's taken me to see this particular stone is because it lies on the ancient lagoon line around 10,400 BC, contemporary with the caves and the pictograms at Elabra that featured in an earlier documentary. In the 1960s, Colombian archaeologist Carlos Armando Rodriguez and Dutch paleontologist, botanist and geologist Thomas van der Hammen discovered one of South America's oldest ancient settlements in central Colombia, the Elabra rock shelters and pictograms, dating to 10,400 BC. Back then, during the younger Dry Estadio, the earth was transitioning out of the Ice Age and the Bogota savanna was submerged beneath glacial waters of Lake Humboldt. Today, we systematically explore that ancient shoreline, hunting for undiscovered archaeology. You can see these red pictograms being washed away by the weather, no protection whatsoever. It's so harrowing to see a site like this just getting scrubbed away after 12,500 years. So there's a high chance these pictograms date back to the Younger Dryas. My plan is to video the pictograms and to take them back to HQ and run them through D-Stretch, a program that's used to up the contrast and pull out underlying latent colours and paints beyond that which the eyes can see. And then I'm going to use a range of AI tools to try and interpret the ancient art. Here's the biggest rock in the field. I would imagine that's where we're going to find the pictogram. That's definitely a waka, a sacred stone associated with ancestral spirits. There's the pictogram right there, just like we saw in Elabra. Okay, so there's one patch of pictograms here with what appears to be three squares, four lines, and three lines. And here are one, two, three diamonds with three outside lines defining them and three peaks here with a line with four peaks and a line with five peaks. We're going to run this through AI and have it interpret it for us but what I can see here are a range of possibilities, possibly three significant mountains and this would be the elevation looking down on them with possibly the profile beside it, these three peaks. But it could also be a serpentine figure or a reptilian figure. This looks quite like a crocodile. And of course here across the savannah, 
was full of water and lay humbled around the 10,400 BC mark. And this here matches the artwork from Elabra dated to 10,400 BC in the middle of the Younger Dry Stadial in Colombia. I'm going to take a few photographs of these pictograms and then I'm going to apply de-stretch to increase the contrast and bring out the underlying notes that can't be seen with the human eye. inspect the whole way around this stone in case there's other underlying pictograms that haven't been seen yet and then we're going to get underneath. I can already see the signs of two caves and considering we're on the Ice Age lagoon line around 10,400 BC we might find signs of tarring where fires have been burnt and God only knows maybe even tools. I'm going to explore in there. And Mira, este rojo. I can see like a red colouring there, but I'm just not sure if that's red ochre or natural where it goes underneath. Mmm. It's definitely blackened in there. Possibly from flames right here at this corner. Again, it's blackened there, but nowhere else on the rock. I'm gonna go under and have a look to see if I can see any rock markings. Ati. I'm looking for tool markings in case they've smoothed off this rock. I can definitely see blackening where it's been burnt only in this corner and nowhere else in the stone but I don't see any tool markings at all I can't really get in any further to see but this would have been two meters lower in the ice age and someone could quite easily have stood up in this we'll go round to the other corner El Otro Rincón para investigar we're going to go round to the other corner and see what's under there this is Elijah Cork. What have you found? Ah, oh, see. It's negro. More blackening of the rock underneath. And the tierra, or the land, would have been about two meters lower in the Ice Age. But look here, underneath these pictograms. There's another. It appears to be a shelter. And again, nowhere else in the stone is there black, but in here. It's really black. Mira, it's muy negro. Okay, por favor. Okay. Grabarme cuando explorando. Super. I'm going to go in and see if I can see any more signs of tool markings or pictograms. Or bones. Imagine I found a big mammoth bone. No, nothing. It's just all stone and wood. 
There's no signs, but this here is definitely smoothed. Mira, this is the, este rincón es un poquito brillante. This is a little bit shiny as if it's been worn. Nah, I don't see anything. No signs of habitation apart from the black on the roof. Just when we thought it was exciting, um, Ishmael's told me that his brother found a carved rock nearby with a face in it, either a pictogram or a petroglyph. So we're going to go and look for that carved rock right now. Is it over here somewhere? I can't see it and it's sometimes rock. Super, vamos. Let's go and look for this carved face. Okay. A donde? Voy a cigarte. Oh, si, sí, gracias. Pero no, yo no lo volví a encontrar. I'm going to just go up over here and see what's happening on the other side of this big stone. And there's the cave we explored beneath it there. We're still looking for this little carved face. I'd love to see that. Imagine we came across a younger dry's face. Maybe with an expression from somebody from the late Ice Age. A hunter, possibly. Great. Oh yeah, there's a scatter of stones around this field here. Yeah, we have to search. Of course, any car face from 11,000 or 12,500 years ago is going to be pretty worn down by now. But we can hardly leave here until we find it. What a lead. That carved face, possibly dating back to the younger dries. I live for that kind of stuff. Ishmael's over there looking for the carved face. That looks like a, a wonderful rock shelter. That could have been used definitely as a hunting car. Oh, look. Ishmael, I found another pictogram. Miraki, Miraki. See, this is, this is a pictogram. That's a pictogram. Incredibly. See it here. It's, 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 it's a face. It's a oh, face. Oh, really? Really? A bit of smell. Uh, this uh, head, uh -huh. uh, one A, and an A, and a uh, noise. So a head, a square head with two eyes and a nose. Uh -huh. That's wild. Well done. Uh -huh. Bien hecho. Okay. See, see, look at that. So what I expected or suspected to be an overhang, a possibly a temporary hunter's camp, has a face. I know there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take some photographs and apply de-stretch to these as well. Goodness knows what's going to pop out of that. That's amazing. So I'm going to take photographs of these two pictograms here. And we're going to apply de-stretch to see if we can pull them out of the rock. But there's definitely one here. It's square with two eyes and a nose. And there's one here, which we can't really determine what it is. But I'm definitely going to shoot these. And we're going to play with de-stretch later. And apply some artificial intelligence to these pictograms to see what they might represent. Gracias, Ishmael. Ciao. Cheers. Right, that's me said cheers to Ishmael. And I'm heading back to HQ to run these images through D-Stretch and to use some AI tools to try and figure out what those ancient pictograms might represent.
D-Stretch, or Decorrelation Stretch, is an image enhancement tool used in archaeology to reveal faint or invisible rock art. It uses principal component analysis to stretch and separate colour channels, amplifying subtle pigment differences, especially in red ochre tones. Non-invasive and highly effective, D-Stretch helps researchers uncover and document ancient pictographs hidden by age or weathering. In this instance, D-Stretch reveals the pictogram is geometrically symmetrical, composed of repeating diamond or zigzag patterns, vertically stacked, with three triangular or chevron-shaped extensions on the left-hand side. And on this example, D-Stretch reveals the pictogram is composed by four square shapes with two net or matrix-type structures on the lower right-hand side, one with four lines and one with three. I'm using a common large language model an AI tool designed to scan past academic papers. I ask it, or prompt, what might this ancient red ochre pictogram discovered in the eastern ranges of the Andes Mountains in central Colombia represent? Compare it with other regional examples and give me its symbolic, cultural and archaeological significance. The results were fascinating, confirming what I speculated while at the stone. This specific style reflects the abstract motifs from younger driest sites in Colombia, for example, at Elabra, dating to 10,400 BC. This specific triangular pattern and pigment use suggest a cultural continuity or shared symbolic language with the people who resided at Elabra. The vertical sinuous form and repetitive diamond-shaped segments may represent the body of a snake or reptile. Such motifs are commonly found in mythological, cosmological and shamanic traditions across the Andes, where such creatures often symbolized fertility, transformation or connections between the earthly and spiritual realms. The diamonds may symbolize territorial divisions like mountain ranges, hilltops, lakes or rivers, but they might also represent solar, lunar, celestial or geodetic alignments. The art may represent proto-writing, a solar or lunar calendar, or kinship systems. It might also be a mnemonic device used in storytelling, especially if read from top to bottom or vice versa. The geometric nature of the motif aligns with the neuropsychological model of Professor David Lewis Williams, who described entopic patterns, or the hallucinogenic visions seen during altered states of consciousness in shamanic rituals. found hardcore archaeology lost in the Andean highlands of Colombia. We discovered this. Look at the archaeology. It's just incredible. Oh, it's dangerous. What you guys may have discovered may rewrite so many things. Look at this. Oh, look at the artwork. 